and welcome back. In this series, we're slowly working on an HP 150A all vacuum tube oscilloscope. Uh, and if I'm being honest, it's, it's just kind of kicking my butt. Uh, I originally intended for this series to only be one, maybe two episodes, uh, but here we are well deep into it and we're not even actually there yet. Uh, but we've made some really good progress. Our sine wave signal that's coming in is actually being displayed on the CRT, so that's good. That means that a large majority of the systems are working. And in the previous episodes, we dove deeply into the 152B dual trace amplifier that plugs into the bottom, and it all seems to be working 100% correctly, which is awesome. We also took a look at the main vertical amplifier, and it seems to be working correctly too. However, we are showing way too much gain for the main vertical amplifier. But we did a little bit of uh, sleuthing around and we discovered that the vertical amplifier and the entire horizontal aspect of the entire machine are linked. So an error in either the horizontal amplifier or the sweep generator circuit could be manifesting itself as too much gain on the vertical amplifier. Uh, so that's what we're gonna dig into today. And for the sweep generator circuit in particular, there are some things that I noticed that I missed and I definitely need to rectify. So I've got it turned on its side on the bench. So let's hop over there, take a look at what I missed, and then we'll get right into it. All right, I've got the machine sitting on its side here. And what we're looking at here is the sweep generator circuit. The horizontal amplifier is actually on the opposite side, uh, but we're gonna focus on this part initially. Uh, because there are some capacitors that I missed in here. Uh, I normally don't like doing blanket recaps, uh, but these kind of wax paper capacitors, you can see one lurking right here, uh, these are notorious for being awful. Uh, and so there's a few that I missed in here that I think should definitely be replaced. Uh, notably on the sweep generator switch here, there's about four or five that I just couldn't get to with the switch in place. Uh, so I think I'm gonna need to remove the switch to get to them. But by removing the switch, that actually will give me access to a black beauty capacitor that I didn't change before because it is directly behind this switch and it would have required the switch to be removed to get to. And so if we take a look at the manual, this is the layout for all of the components that are on the switch itself. Now, I don't think that these are going to be causing the problem that we're seeing with too much gain on the vertical amplifier, but they are wax type capacitors and I think they should probably be changed. Uh, but most importantly, by getting that switch out of the way, we'll gain access to capacitor C26. And so if we take a look at the sweep generator schematic here, uh, we can see that C26 is this capacitor right here that goes into the sync Schmidt trigger. And so that's also going to affect the sweep start stop trigger because these are all kind of linked to each other through T4, which is a little transformer right here. Um, and so if C26 here is leaky to ground, that's gonna cause all sorts of issues in this entire circuit here. Another capacitor that I think we should probably change is going to be C48 right down here. Uh, this is a tiny capacitor and thankfully it's easy to get to. And so if we look at the schematic one more time, uh, the schematic is not the cleanest scan, but I believe C48 is right up here. Um, and so if that capacitor is leaky or causing issues, it can make things go real wonky as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this switch out. Uh, it looks like it might be a little bit of a pain because it is well and truly jam packed in there, but I absolutely need to get access to those capacitors in particular C26 underneath. Um, so, well, there's only one thing to do and that's just to get into it.
All right, so we're close. <laughs> we're really close. Now to show you just how close we are, I've got this set up like the manual outlines here for adjusting the vertical amplifier gain. This says to connect 0.2 volts from the calibrator to the input, and then to set our vertical sensitivity to 0.05. And then they say to adjust R5 for exactly four centimeters of vertical deflection. And I've got R5 maxed out and I'm, man, I'm not quite at four centimeters. I'm at about three and a half centimeters. But there is a uh, different problem going on. And uh, you may have noticed that it is incredibly dark in this room. And I had to do that in order to be able to see the trace. So the logical thing is to turn the intensity up. But the problem is, is that uh, whether the intensity is down or up, the uh, brightness doesn't change. But something does change. Uh, when I turn the intensity all the way down, you'll notice that the brightness of the beam didn't change, but our vertical deflection actually got less. And if I turn the intensity all the way up, again, the brightness doesn't change, but our vertical deflection becomes more. So our intensity knob here is not changing the intensity of the CRT and is instead changing the amount of vertical gain that we're seeing, which doesn't make any sense at all to me. So if we check out the schematic for the uh, high voltage supply here, we can see that the intensity control is uh, this collection of resistors and potentiometer here that uh, affects the voltage of the grid in some way. So I think what I need to do is I need to probe a little more around the intensity adjust down here and see if I can figure out why it's just not affecting uh, the grid voltage at all. Maybe my supply voltage isn't making to it or something like that. So that's the next step that I'm going to start working on because I wanna make sure that this is not affecting uh, horizontal or vertical gain. Um, and it clearly is as we just saw. So uh, we've got a little more troubleshooting to do. I need to swing these sides open and dig into the back of there because this is in a terrible spot to get to, uh, but hopefully we can figure out what's going on with that and get our CRT displaying a little brighter. All right, it's been, uh, whew, I don't know, about two weeks. I've been uh, just chasing faults all through this. Sometimes I think it's a fault. Sometimes it's not a fault and it's a cause of something else. Uh, I've been pretty much on the verge of losing my mind for about, <laughs> for about a week straight now. Uh, but I have to give a shout out to a ton of people in the Discord. Uh, Lucas, Samantha, Cyber Dragon, Crasby, Patriotic Stripey, so many of these people have just come together to help me get this thing going. <laughs> and while it's not going yet, but they have kept me going in the right direction because there was a time when I was about ready to uh, tie a chain to it and use it as a boat anchor. But I think we're finally making some progress. I was chasing the intensity problem and the first thing that I did was I modeled up the intensity resistor divider network that was going on there. Uh, so that way I could kind of get an idea of the types of voltages that I should expect out of that. And it measured totally in spec. So I knew that the problem had to be deeper in the HV circuit. Uh, now the entire HV circuit is essentially composed of two parts. There's this board uh, on top that's mounted upside down, and then there's this RF shielded box here. And what goes inside this box is the uh, transformer and the uh, high voltage rectifier diodes, uh, which we can see are uh, very tightly packaged onto this little box here. And it's all point to point wiring. Um, so, you know, we can see that this is the actual transformer here, and then these are HV diodes here with the sockets on the bottom, and the caps come through on the top here. Uh, and these capacitors here are all 6,000 volt capacitors, which is a little terrifying. Uh, but we pulled this out trying to find faults, um, and I was thinking, you know, maybe there's a black beauty capacitor here, uh, and there's another one over here. And I am going to replace these because uh, most of the black beauty capacitors on this thing have been destroyed. Um, these are only 600 volt capacitors, so I was able to uh, find some that can replace that fairly easily. Um, but what this did is it gave me access to slide this top circuit board out a little bit, which let me start probing and checking things a little more closely. 
And so if we look at the schematic, uh, there's a bunch of resistors to check on here and uh, Cyber Dragon kind of got me pointed in the right direction. Uh, he said this uh, main kind of voltage divider circuit here that goes from uh, plus 400 volts um, all the way down to minus 5,000 volts. Uh, this is the, the one that I need to check the most. Um, and as I was going through and checking it, R274 at the top here, which is a 4.15 mega ohm resistor, uh, I checked it on the board here and it measured out to like 200 mega ohms. And so I kind of craned my head up underneath to get a look at it. And uh, as you can see, that resistor looks well and truly toasty. Uh, but finding a 4.15 mega ohm 1% 1 watt resistor is not easy. But uh, Patriotic Stripey had an excellent suggestion. He suggested that I get a bag of these uh, 4.3 mega ohm resistors. Uh, these are one watt, but they are 5% resistors, uh, which is not accurate enough, but it was like five bucks for a hundred of these. Um, and then because they are 5% resistors, I could just go through and measure them until I found one that was on the low side of that 5%. And this is my magic resistor. This one measures out to 4.17 to 1.8 mega ohms. Um, so I think this one's gonna work. So we need to desolder the toasty one. We need to solder this one in. I'm also gonna replace these black beauty capacitors up here. And then hopefully Bob's your uncle and uh, we, we get a bright picture on the front. But there's only one way to find out and that's to break out the soldering iron and get to work. All right, I think we're all back together and ready to give this thing a test. I am super nervous. Uh, we'll put the intensity all the way counterclockwise. That's gonna keep it as low as possible. We also have our input hooked up here. So that way, if it comes on and it's way too bright, it's not gonna burn a hole in the phosphor right in the center. At least the beam will be moving left to right and top to bottom. That'll give me enough time to hopefully flip the power switch off in case it all goes wrong. And well, I think I've stalled long enough. Uh, let's go ahead and flip the switch. Now remember there's gonna be a 30 second delay while the heaters warm up, and then hopefully we'll see something exciting. All right, so that was a uh, total failure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, when it kicked on, I heard a strange noise coming from the back. At first I thought it was high voltage arcing, but it didn't sound quite right for that. Um, but I do think we popped a capacitor. Um, this capacitor right here on the far edge is now all wet and it wasn't before. Um, and so that, I think it kind of gave up the ghost. And so if we look at the schematic here, um, that capacitor is this one, C114, which is a uh, 4700 picofarad 6000 volt uh, capacitor, which is unfortunate. <laughs> um, but that one going uh, may have possibly damaged uh, some of these resistors. 
um, or perhaps some of these resistors caused that one to go. Um, I did check all of these before and they measured in spec with the exception of R274 up here that we changed, um, but I'm gonna go through and check all of these again um, because I think I'll have some time until a, a new one of these 6,000 volt capacitors shows up. Okay, so the capacitor that went out uh, was this capacitor right here, which is C114. Um, that's a uh, 4700 picofarad, 6000 volt capacitor. I had to make a new one out of a uh, 3300 picofarad and a 1300 picofarad uh, in parallel to give me 4600 picofarad, which I believe is going to be close enough. But R280 here, I also measured to be totally out of spec. Uh, it's supposed to be a one meg ohm resistor um, and it measured out at like eight meg ohms. Now, whether this resistor caused the death of the capacitor or the death of the capacitor caused the death of the resistor, I'm not really sure, but either way, both were bad. Both have been replaced uh, and well, I, I think that brings us up to uh, another test fire here. All right, I am cautiously optimistic, but fully expecting something to go horribly wrong uh, because, well, that's, uh, that's been my luck. Uh, but let's, let's give it a shot. Whoa, look how much brighter it is. Holy cow. All right. Uh, well, okay, I believe that, <laughs> that is uh, what we can successfully classify as progress. That's awesome. The horizontal position is working much better now. Uh, my vertical position is working much better now. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Let's pop the look how rock solid the trigger is. The trigger has never been that crystal clear. That is amazing. <laughs> yes. All right. Now we just got to figure out if it's actually in spec. <laughs> All right. I cannot describe how unbelievably sharp the CRT is. It is incredible looking. Uh, but I want to make sure that uh, it's, it's actually in spec. Uh, but if we look in the manual, there's a condensed test and adjustment procedure page uh, that has one for main amplifier gain. Um, and it says to connect 0.2 volts from the calibrator to the input. Uh, and then it says to change the vertical sensitivity to 0.05 volts. Uh, we'll try to center our waveform here. And then it says adjust R5 for exactly four centimeters of vertical deflection. And you can see right now we're at one, two, three, four and a half maybe, um, which is already closer than we've ever been. So let's see if we can get R5 to bring that vertical deflection down to uh, right into spec. And it looks like we've got enough to do that. Look at that. That is perfect. Our vertical amplifier gain is 100% on point. That is awesome. <laughs> All right, I've got the Siglent set up here along with my signal generator, the HP Wide Range Oscillator over here. Uh, it's putting out a signal and I'm receiving it on both of these. 
Um, and right now, both the, both the scopes are set up in exactly the same way. Uh, it's five volts per division for both of them and uh, 0.5 milliseconds or 500 microseconds uh, per division. And uh, well, right, right off the bat, we can see that they look identical. Uh, but what the SIGLINK gives us is actual numbers that we can use to check across here. Uh, but the next thing I want to check is the frequency, because if we remember before, it was way out as well. Uh, and if we look here on the Siglent scope, it says the frequency is pretty much exactly one kilohertz. And one millisecond is equal to one kilohertz, uh, so we should expect to see uh, peak to peak to cover two divisions here. If I change my uh, horizontal position to line that up, uh, you can see that, uh, well, we're not quite there. We're so close, uh, but it's just a little short. And looking through the manual, it looks like R199 is our potentiometer to adjust that. Um, so I'll go ahead and give R199 here a bit of an adjustment. Um, we'll see if we can get that. Oh, look how much, look how much flexibility I have there. Oh, that is awesome. We can definitely bring this into spec. <laughs> there we go. It's exactly showing one kilohertz and it's exactly showing 10 volts peak to peak, which is exactly what the Siglent is showing. This scope works. Normally I don't uh, film my face again for the outro of videos, but I uh, felt it was important to show you the wave of relief that is coming over the face of exhaustion here. Uh, first of all, it's about 900 degrees in here. I'm sweating like crazy uh, because this thing is putting off just a colossal amount of heat. It doesn't help that I also have the uh, signal generator putting out heat as well. Uh, but <laughs> we're there. We're finally there. It is adjusted. It is completely and totally in spec. I have my HP 150A scope alive and working, and it is working beautifully. <laughs> this was a series that I thought would be one, maybe two episodes. Uh, we are much deeper into it than that. Um, and well, even from the intro of this episode to the outro now, I have grown quite a bit more facial hair. Uh, it has been a tumultuous couple of weeks, but we got there and I could not be happier with the result. Uh, all I've got to do now is put the case back on it and then uh, take some very pretty pictures to share with all of my friends who undoubtedly will go, why is he excited about a 70-year-old uh, piece of equipment? Uh, but man, I just, I'm absolutely in love with this thing. As brutal as it treated me, and as insane as the repair process was, it's here and I could not love it more. I am just so happy. I'm over, completely over the moon. Um, so I want to thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this uh, rather long journey to bring this HP scope back to life. Uh, it was far more involved than I ever anticipated, uh, but it is priming me quite well for some more future HP projects coming up. Uh, we have some more old school HP equipment out there that needs fixing. So uh, I think this one was probably the most difficult. Hopefully the next ones will go a lot smoother, uh, but we won't know until we get into those. But for now, I'm going to put any manner of signal I can through this thing just to see the CRT look as crisp and bright as it is, because this is, ah, it's just so cool. I'm so happy. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.